Swinburne University of Technology. Hi, and welcome back to Swinburne Codecasts. I'm Andrew Kane. And I'm Cliff. And in this video, we're going to be looking at objects. So far, our programs have had data and functionality as two separate sets of artifacts. So things like records to manage our data and functions and procedures to organize our functionality. And that's been really good, but uh, I'm at the point where I've got these entities that use data to represent themselves and use functions that work with that data, but they're still separate. Is there a way that we can bring those two things together? Well, yes. This is where we can start to look at the idea of objects and object-oriented programming. And objects are another way of sort of thinking about our programs and allow us to combine together data and functionality into what we call an object. And each object knows and can do things. Oh. Sounds pretty powerful, yeah? So, so they know and can do things? Yeah. Okay. Well, I've been, I've been revising one of uh, Ruben's old programs, uh, the, the Friend Book. Yep. You remember that really, really popular application he's making? Yep. And, um, and I was looking at this, and this is a great example of where we've got these, this data that has these functions working on them. Yep. And it would be really good to integrate those two things. Yeah, so you've got the idea of a person, and we have data related to the person, and then we have procedures and functions that operate on that person. So yeah. we can print the person out, for example, we could add a friend to the person. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So we could use like objects to represent the the person or the the people in this, um, where I suppose the the things that they know are their names, the email address, the the data, and yep. and the things that it can do would be like adding friends and printing those details out. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. So this is exactly what we could do. So we could create something to represent each person in our program. Yeah. And they would have data, such as like the name, which would be a string, email, which would be a string. The friend would be another person that they refer to. Okay, so that's that's much like the the record that we had previously storing that information. Yeah, it's ex it's exactly it's like exa a record. Oh wow! Yeah. It's just now encapsulated within a person. And so the, the things that the object can do would be the previous functions and procedures? Yeah, that's right. So the, the object encapsulates both things it knows and things it can do. So it has data that it knows, yep. and the old functions and procedures become things that the object can do. We, we, we think about them a little bit differently, uh, but that's the basic idea. You, the object encapsulates knowledge, what it knows, and things that it can do. Okay, so what do you mean by encapsulation? So the idea of encapsulation is Sort of what it's saying, encapsulate, is means enclose within a capsule, basically. Um, it, yeah, that's what they mean with the program. So <laughs> here, what, what we're talking about in terms of an object encapsulating something, it means there is, you can picture the object like it's a capsule, it's a thing. It has, there is an outside and inside of the object. And everything is self-contained. Yes, within that one thing. Okay. And here we have some things which we call uh, private. Uh, they're available only inside the object. So that's the person's privates that, yeah, we're, that and, we're looking at there. Yeah, that's right. And you don't let others play with your private parts. Okay, yeah, yeah that, that, that seems really fair. Good yeah. analogy. <laughs> yes, yeah. I like that one too. <laughs> uh, anyway, and you then have a public part, and that's the bit that's exposed to the outside. So that would be what's sort of like the outside of the capture, what other people can see. Okay. Uh, so, but the idea would be, at this point, we would want to be able to think about encapsulating, meaning that there is a capsule, effectively. You know, there is a person. Okay. Yep. That person has things we can see and they have things internal to them which they manage themselves. Okay, Cliff, do you want to talk through quickly how this works? Okay, so you can see here I've declared the person class. This acts as the template for the person object. Yeah, so we can create person objects from the class. And lots of OO languages, object-oriented languages, we declare classes which is a sort of like a, a kind of object. Yeah, this is what the object classification for those objects. Yeah, and so within that we we define all of the the fields that were previously stored in the record. So the yeah, these are the things the object knows or the objects are going to know. Yeah, that's right, that's right. And following that, we've got the um, the things that the object can do. So that's the that's the methods. Yeah, so methods are like the functions and procedures. They they are slightly different, and we've got a couple of special ones. So there is a constructor, and the constructor is used when we create the object. Okay, uh, yep. And so that can be used to initialize values. Uh, and we can also have 
other functions and procedures, which are similar to functions and procedures. We'll have a look at how they work in a minute. But they're, they're specific to this class. Yeah, yeah to, or to that, to an object of this class. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so that you can call add friend to a person, on a person yep. in this program. Uh, and we also have properties which give you access, because remember the private details are hidden inside the object. Yeah. Yeah, so we can read the name and email via properties here. And so that gives us control over the, the, the private fields if we wanted to change or edit the information. Yeah, if we want to let people outside change those details. Okay. So outside of this object, yep. can we change those details? Yep, okay, cool. Well, um, let's head down to, to main. Uh, so the program starts and we and we create space for two people, me and other. Yep. And the, so in most languages, objects are actually going to reside on the heap. So me and other are pointers in this case to uh, a person. Okay. So at, the, at this point, there is no actual objects. Yep, just an idea. Of yeah, them. that there will be an object that me points to and then one that other points to. Okay, and so this is quite distinct from the previous iteration of this program where the records would have been stored on the stack. That's correct. So we call read person, and when it gets to here, it creates a person. Yeah, and so what that does is, is multiple things. The first thing when we create an object uh, is the language allocates space on the heap for that object. So that's going to be enough space to store all of the things that the object knows. Yeah, okay. Yep. Uh, and then it executes the constructor. And the constructor is our chance to hook into that creation process. And we can now initialize all of the things the object knows. Basically. That's basically what you want to do at this point. Yeah, okay. And it's almost in its name. As the constructor, that's where you construct the, the identity of the thing. You put all the data that you need in there. Yeah, that's right. And so in this case, we haven't provided any data. We could actually have parameters provide data to the construction, and we use those parameters at that point. Yep. But in this case, what we're doing is we're creating the object with no data, and so we initialize just with empty details. Okay, so we'll be, we'll be filling those later. Yes. Yeah, okay, cool. Now, when the constructor finishes, we get back the pointer. Yep. And that pointer is what is stored in result. So okay. result, the variable, isn't actually the object. Okay. It just points, it says the object is over there. That's, that's news to me, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So then we call the read string function to assign a value to the uh, the name property. Yeah. Yeah, so what's happening here, because the name field is private, we can't actually access that the same way that we did with records. So with records, you had access to the data. With objects, you've only got access to the publicly exposed details. And properties are just a convenient way of allowing you to get and to set values related to a field. And it, we can control that, and there's much more you can sort of do with properties. But as a basic idea, it's just a means of saying whether or not somebody can read or write to, to that property. So here we've said they can read and write to the name. Uh, and so and this, to the email as well, yeah? Yeah, that's correct. Yep. And so in this case, we're, we're setting it, so we're changing the value of the name. And so it will write the value into the name field of the object. Okay, so that, that gives us access to those things and it does takes care of all that for us. Yes. So the same thing is going to happen for email there. Yeah. Um, we don't have it for friend. Is uh, that, in... that comes up later. Okay. Yeah. So at the moment, the friend will be null, They're pointing to nothing. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so we get to the end of the, the function call here. We return to main and we assign that pointer of a person to me. That's right. So that object that we've got allocated on the heap, we return back that pointer and we say the object that we have read in is on the heap at that point. This is pretty cool. I like that it's like managing all of the things using pointers. And yeah, I, but you and, don't have to And I don't it. need to think about it. Yeah, that's it's great. Cool. Yeah. Um, so the same thing goes with, uh, with other, I'm yep. guessing, same steps. And so we can type in some different details. Yep. Okay, so here, here we get to the adding the friend business. Yep. Uh, now, uh, I can see here that it's actually uh, calling the method from the object me. Yes. All right, so this is where objects are slightly different to the way we were working with records. Because the object has both the data and the functionality, it now becomes the more important thing. Yeah, yeah. okay, so it's all about me now. <laughs> In this case, yes. Awesome. So the person object referred to by the me variable. Yep. Uh, we, what we're doing here is we're telling it that we want to add a friend yep. to okay. that person. So let me, let me see if I can get this logic straight. I've got me, I'm a pointer, I've got a method in me called addFriend, and I'm going to take another pointer to another 
person and give that to my method so I know who my friends are. Yes. Whew. Okay, I think I'm getting this. Yeah, this is possibly a little bit confusing. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping it'll be, it, the pictures will help it make sense. Yeah. Yeah, so here we pass in the other friend. Yep, now uh, what happens in there? Okay, so we've got, uh, we've got the new friend parameter there. Um, and it's taking it as a, a constant, but that just means it's a pointer, yeah? Oh, uh, well, because it's a person, it's a pointer already. Great. Okay, and so oh wow, all we need to do is just say uh, so that's my field. Yeah. So this is the interesting part. Now that we're inside, remember this was called on the me object oh, from yeah, main. Yeah. yeah. So this yeah. is something that I can do. So this is something inside that object. So inside that object we have the things that that object knows and that object can do yep. directly accessible. So inside here where I say underscore friend in this case, I yep. mean the friend field of the current object. Okay, yeah. Yep. Just like in the constructor, when we were constructing the object, we were able to access the fields directly there as well. Yep. They were the fields of the current object, the one being created. Here, it's the field of the object that we are adding the friend to. So as, as in this case, it was me that was calling this, um, but uh, other would also have access to its own version of this method. Is that how it works? Yeah, that's right. So we could call other dot add friend. And that would refer to its private field underscore friend. That's correct. Oh, that's going to make things so much easier. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it is quite cool. It takes a little while to get your head around and this whole uh, idea of thinking about it in this way is different. But the cool bit is that the logic within any one of these procedures methods now yep. uh, functions or procedures is, is the same in as in procedural programming so we're still using sequence selection repetition just the way we hook things together changes okay i think i'm i think i'm getting it i think i'm getting it okay so down down here we've got another down here we've got another call uh to a method of me called yep. called print name and what that's going to do is that's going to take the... the um, well, we call it on the person again. Yep. Yeah. And so when we print it out, the person's name is... And it prints out the details from the current object's that called name. It. Yeah, that it was called on. That, that it was called on. Okay. That's right. Cause we, yep. So we call it on me in this case. And so yep. it prints out the name of me. Yeah. Yep. Okay, cool. And then we could call it on me again to print out the details. And so that will go up and print out... Uh, the details of this person. So when we access name here, it's the name of the current object. It's yep. the email of the current object. It's the friend of the current object. Cool. That's that's really cool. Yeah. So here's another couple of examples for objects. Uh, this first one looks at uh, the idea of cards. Well, they're both these. Both of these examples are related to cards. Okay. So like a deck of cards. Yeah. So a card can have a, a suit and a, a value. Yep. Uh, and whether it's face up or not. So we could create a card like the Queen of Hearts. Yeah, yeah. Ace of Spades. Yeah, and we could then flip that card over. So that would be a thing that, that it does. Yeah, so okay. we could say whether the card was face up or face down. We could then flip the card over. It would know which way up it was. We could yeah. flip it over again. Well, we don't. We tell it to. Very good. Hey. I, just, I was just yeah, testing. Yeah, yeah, no, I've been just listening. Checking, yeah. I like the fact that we're using uh, enumeration here as well so we can you know, specify only a deck of cards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not not a happy birthday card or anything like that. Yes, very good. Uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> uh, we then have our deck. So the idea of a deck would actually have a number of cards inside it. And so when we call the constructor of the deck, yep. it would go ahead and create those 52 card objects. That's cool, because that's like an object within an object. That's yeah. Incep well, this object, inception. It refers to the other object, because remember they're all pointed. So each object oh, is yeah. separate on the stack. On the stack. Each object is separate on the heap. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and the deck would refer to those other 52 card objects. And when we shuffle the deck, it could reorder how it pictured those objects. Okay. It doesn't actually move the objects in memory, yep. just where it thinks, which it thinks. Yep. So it just one. switches around the arrows. Basically, yeah. Yeah, cool. All right, that's it for objects. Objects are a different way of thinking about or different way of organizing our code. Instead of having data here and functionality over there, what we end up having is, is one entity, the idea of an object where each object knows and can do things. An object encapsulates a bunch of functionality. We can then tell it what to do, and it can use the things that it knows to achieve those tasks. Yeah, and although this may be the end of this video, it's really just the beginning of the journey. That's right. So objects is sort of the next step. 
once we've got the idea of procedural programming, all of the things that we've learned can now be built on in terms of objects as a better way of organizing that functionality. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Wiffle waffle. Bye. <laughs> this has been a Swinburne production. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.